Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And last week saw us have a very interesting rally on the Thursday and the Friday, uh, which caused the uh, global equity markets and crude oil both to manage to make up a little bit of, uh, of lost momentum and push back up higher. With uh, crude oil actually jumping about 10% on Friday, uh, which is a very, very impressive move. And uh, most other global equity markets took a sigh of relief as, uh, as kind of buyers came in and the sellers took a little bit of a break heading into the, uh, into the weekend. And a lot of traders, myself as well, would have thought that there was danger that we could have seen a little bit of a sell-off towards the end of the session. But after Mario Draghi um, midweek came out with the fact that the ECB would do all it could to support the Eurozone, that gave the markets a lot of needed cheer. But there's still question marks um, around if Mario Draghi will follow through with his promise to do unlimited action. Um, but I guess we will find out later on if that will be the case. And this week also brings us uh, the FOMC and Bank of Japan with their uh, interest rate decisions and statements as to you know, their monetary policy. And that'll be interesting to see if um, Myro Draghi will be going out alone or if there'll be support from the US and from Japan as well. So first thing this morning in the, in, in the global markets, we've actually seen, uh, after all that big massive spike that we had on, on Friday, most markets now have just completely flatlined, if not just moving that little bit lower as well. So when we have a look at the charts from a technical perspective, we'll have a look at those candle formations in a bit more detail. And there isn't actually anything really that exciting micro data wise until we get to the FOMC meeting midweek. Uh, and that means that most markets might be driven heavily by the technical factors. And um, the fact that we've not followed through with that much momentum so far this morning uh, could mean that a lot of traders are going to take a defensive view until we get more, a bit more clarity from that FOMC uh, session itself. So that gives you an idea as to the overall flavor of the market. And uh, let's look at things from a more technical perspective to, uh, to get a bit more of an idea of where they could go next, okay? So let's look at the US 30 to start. So as you can see there, uh, we've had that decent rebound. Uh, the candle, very, very strong, uh, bear, uh, bullish engulfing pattern, but we've actually already started to move into negative territory. We were, um, when I last looked at this, this is actually just slightly ticked a little bit higher. It was in the green, but now it's already moving lower. 78% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. The MACD is not yet crossed over. There was a buy signal on the RSI, and we were getting quite close to a crossover on the slow stochastic as well. Jumping then on to the UK 100, very strong move. Obviously, a lot of the commodity markets have had an influence on the UK 100 with copper and oil both rebounding strongly, only then to reverse course a little bit this morning. As you can see, we are also following the US 30 slightly lower with a negative candle, and it was in positive territory to start. Uh, if I just have a look at this from a, from a client submit standpoint, 62% of CMC market clients are currently long. They'll be hoping for a bit more of a rebound. Jumping on to Japan, 225, very strong candle on Friday. Uh, we have been lower this morning, you can see the tip of this candle right here, uh, and it has moved a little bit higher, but nevertheless, 78% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. Next potential support, 16,440. Then having a look at dollar yen. Dollar yen, 91% of CMC clients are long. Uh, the US dollar has managed to, uh, to push up that much higher. We've actually gapped a little bit lower uh, on, on the open. Could be, it could be supported by that 21 period SMA, but also by 118 and change as a potential uh, support level. This would have been a level, uh, a broken support all the way back in March. Uh, we're on the uh, right side of that at the moment. I think for as long as we stay on that side, uh, we, should be, we should be okay. If it breaks below that, and your fear returns to the market in a big way, people will buy the Japanese yen again. And uh, that will give you uh, a little bit more momentum to the downside. So 116 spot 80 would be that next potential level. Our old friend Crude Oil West Texas, and what a fantastic run that it had going all the way from, uh, from 26 all the way up to 31 spot 50. Uh, and we were even higher this morning, but again, pushed back down. 51% of CMC clients are currently short. Uh, we did have a bullish cross here. We obviously had the buy signal on the hour sign, the slow stochastic, um, but this is not a great candle to have. Okay, we just started the session to be quite, to be quite fair, uh, but already we're on the back foot. So then have a quick look at gold. Uh, gold oscillating around $1,100. You've got a high, lower high, lower high. Could be the start of some sort of symmetrical triangle formation that will give it time to develop. You do have two levels of support, 1,100, then 1,085. The other technicals are relatively neutral, though we did have a bullish cross on the moving averages. It's not really followed through with any significance. 
59% of CMC clients are currently long. So looking at Euro dollar, Euro dollar broke below potential support at one spot zero eight and change. We've had a retracement back up to that level so far this morning, but we've not broken through it with any conviction. 55 period SMA might also uh, add potential resistance. Longer term potential support, one spot zero six sixty. 83% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. And then if we finish up there with GBP USD, very volatile session on Friday for the sterling try to rally, got pushed back down. Again, the dollar's taking a little bit of control uh, and we're still above one spot 42 and change. That's been that longer term potential um, support for some time. Do I have to go onto a weekly chart? I think I do. And then if we go that little bit further back, that's a hammer formation that you would have here. So that from a weekly perspective should be quite a strong reversal signal, but it's hardly followed through. But one spot 42 and change is potential support. We want GBP USD to stay above that, otherwise there's gonna be problems. But the fact is we've had long legged candles each time we try to push higher, albeit a lower high, sorry, high. There's a high, a higher high, a higher high. Let's see if that continues. Those CMC clients are pretty bearish, 95% sure. So we finish up there with the market calendar. Uh, you'll be able to see there that we've got a uh, business survey IFO data. Uh, we do have um, CCI in the US. Then we've got the FOMC there on, uh, on Wednesday to look forward to. Uh, and then a whole host of data there on Thursday as well. So that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. Well, guys, very good luck with your trading uh, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and goodbye.